What's the crack? Big dogs. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the headquarters. My name is Nicholas. This is BDG. Big dogs gotta eat. And every summer, BDG E does the thing that I'm most proud of as a brand. We have 11 subscribers fly out to New York. We rent an Airbnb. We make draft picks and we get pickled. Today's video is gonna be going round by round, pick by pick in that draft of my draft. And we're gonna break down my thought process to it. We're gonna break down um, my team where I think I did well, things I regret, not from the weekend. That video would be way too fucking long. Just the draft picks that I had, okay? The settings for this league, 12 teams, super flex, half PPR, tight ends get one full PPR, no kickers, no defense. Just the sexiest, just the sexiest settings that y'all can find in one single league. The vlog for this weekend will be coming out this upcoming weekend. So stay tuned for that. $225 buy-in. So we do that times 12. Handy dandy TI 80 Trizzy. $2,700 pots. This is the big time. I lost in the championship game in this league last time. I had an unbelievable team. Three of the top five running backs. Deshaun Watson, the year he popped off. It was C-Mac, Aaron Jones. I want to say Austin Eckler. It was just absurd. It was just ridiculous. And I lost in the championship. That's just the way fantasy football goes. That's just the way life goes sometimes. But this year, we're going to clean up the league. And speaking of cleaning up the league, speaking of cleaning up yourself, no better way to do it than with Manscapes Lawnmower 4.0, Manscapes Crop Cleanser, and Manscapes Ball Deodorant. Y'all need to clean yourselves up better than me, obviously. I'm not looking good after this weekend, but you know what will help me look much better? Get a nice hot shower. Zzz, turn this bitch on. Clean myself up. The Lawnmower 4.0. Is such a beautiful piece of technology. And honestly, their charging kit, which wireless, is equally as beautiful as the actual lawnmower itself. But this thing will not cut you when you're shaving. This is like the premier manscaping male grooming kits. What do you call them? The male sexual grooming kit? It's for downstairs. For those of y'all that have never heard of Manscaped, which is probably impossible because they have partnered with basically every single podcast around the planet. But this thing is amazing. The technology behind this thing somehow will not cut you up down there ever. When you when you head down to the, the jugs, though, I would suggest you put one of these bad boys on. It's a half millimeter or a full millimeter. It won't slice you up. It's waterproof, so obviously we're doing that in the shower. They have bundles and packages. They have t-shirts. They got under, underwear. It's actually kind of fire. Their merch is amazing. But anything you order on manscaped.com, you're going to get 20% off with the promo code BDGE. So you go buy yourself the Lawnmower 4.0 package. Their premium package, you get 20% off. And in my opinion, it's like a zillion dollars. Looking good, feeling good priceless stop shaving downstairs with razors that is i can't believe people still fucking do i haven't done that since i was fifth grade get yourself a buzzer get yourself the lawnmower 4.0 their new beautiful piece of technology and when you do on manscaped.com you're using promo code b d g e clean yourself up look better than me now watch this video and draft better than me let's tuck our shirts in let's stop yelling let's eat <laughs> All right, let's dive into the thump and the thrash dashboard. I'm sitting there at numero five. I originally had the ninth pick and I moved up to the fifth pick. We uh, we don't do like in draft trading, but we had our picks about a week before the actual draft took place. So I was trying to move up a little bit just because if I can move up inside the top five, I knew I would probably secure... Uh, one of the top three running backs. And as I've kind of stated in the last few videos, Kamara has kind of jumped Zeke and Henry and those guys for me, especially in a half PPR league. So the settings for this league are super flex. Okay. So we're starting two quarterbacks, basically two running backs, two wide receivers, two flexes, uh, a tight end. And this is tight end premium. So everybody gets half PPR tight ends get full PPR. That's it. We have no kickers. We have no defenses. We voted those out. Uh, I am firmly on board with getting kickers the fuck out of every league I'm in. Defenses, I'm kind of indifferent towards. I kind of like playing with defenses. This league just happened to have voted them out. So, you know, you guys know I like to go running back heavy. I want to secure my running backs because if you look at how the draft board played out, you know, uh, we'll get into that later, actually. Fuck it. So this, this draft occurred on Friday August 27th. So before this week of preseason games. So you'll see a couple weird kind of draft picks. And obviously I'll explain it as we go by. So we had C-Mac, Dalvin Cook go off one, two, no surprise. And then listen, the first, th this is a, this is a D 
decently big money buy-in. This is $225 a head, 12 people. So you do the math and that's something like, I don't know, the pot's what, third, $25,000, $3,000, some shit like that. So yeah, this is being taken seriously for sure. Uh, Superflex is four point per passing touchdown, minus two point for interceptions. Josh Allen was the first quarterback off the board. Um, Kyle, Kyler Murray went off at four. And then I'm sitting there at five, and I'm like, I'm going to look like a fucking asshole if I don't take my homes here. But again, guys, I, I, I've, I've been saying, like, I just don't really want to use a pick in the first round, especially top five on something other than the running back, because I knew I was going to get, look, I can get Russell Wilson in the third round, but you're not going to get the equivalent of an Alvin Kamara in the third round, right? So I went with Kamara. I feel really good about uh, him this year now that Jameis Winston has been named the starter and they have nobody else on offense kind of doing a damn thing. So the rest of the first round, as you could see, there was no wide receivers picked all the way until the 207, Devontae Adams. And that was one pick before me. And part of me was like, yeah, well, obviously I would have, I would have loved to have grabbed Devontae Adams there to be my wide receiver one. But part of me was like, I kind of want to just grab my second running back and be done with the running back position or at least have my two high end ones. So I got Joe Mixon at the 207. He was the last running back kind of in that tier. Maybe Clyde Edwards Hilaire. I think you could have probably made the argument for him to be in that Gibson, Najee Harris, Joe Mixon tier. Uh, the ankle injury. A little bit concerning, but I think he's going to have enough time to rest it. And it doesn't seem as serious. They did just cut Darwin Thompson, which tells you that they're probably comfortable with what they got at the running back position right now. So I grabbed Joe Mixon, yes, over Tyree Kill, over Stephon Diggs, over Ridley. Again, guys, in a setting like this where it's half PPR and you're only starting two wide receivers, you only have to start two wide receivers, uh, I just don't think it makes sense to use premium picks on them when you can get, I mean, you look at the rest of the board. Like, yes, it's nice to have a Tyree Kill or Ridley at Diggs, and I'm sure they're going to be awesome this year. But when you can look at the sixth, it's the fifth, sixth, seventh round. You can grab Amari Cooper in the fifth round. You can grab Deontay Johnson in the sixth round. I got Julio Jones in the seventh round. So it's like, you know, does it make sense to jump all the way up and grab the grab that position when, you know, you look at the team above me, team four, right? They grabbed uh, quarterbacks and wide receivers, didn't get a running back until round six. And listen, like I think Chase Edmonds and Miles Gaskin are probably really good RB zero candidates. So I think they did that correctly, but you know, it doesn't always work out that way. So we grabbed Mixon and then sitting there at the three Oh five. I mean, it was a no brainer for me grabbing uh Russell Wilson there, get my first quarterback. I do want to have someone in that first tier of quarterbacks. And for me, that's Josh Allen, Kyler Murray, Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, Dak Prescott. And then uh, Rogers and Wilson are probably the two that are done there. Had Russell Wilson not been on the board there. I think DK Metcalf probably makes sense as my wide receiver one, you know, could probably split the difference between DK Metcalf, AJ Brown, uh, whoever you're more comfortable with. But I was obviously ecstatic to have Russell Wilson as my QB one. Next pick, J.K. Dobbins. You absolutely fucking hate to see it. So yeah, we we again we drafted Friday afternoon. The J.K. Dobbins injury news broke Saturday morning, which is why I always tell y'all the best, the single best time to draft fantasy football teams is. Labor Day Monday. That's when we do our E-Town Get Down Draft. And the vlog for this, the vlog for this, I think I probably mentioned it in the intro to this video, uh, will come out hopefully Friday, hopefully September 3rd, uh, maybe September 4th. But pretty sure we're going to have this delivered, hand-delivered beautifully for y'all at some point this weekend. So we took Russell Wilson at the 305. And then on the back turn, um see what we had here yeah just just some some crazy crazy picks obviously you see james robinson went off at the 303 we had uh josh jacobs at the 403 um keenan allen i would have loved to have fallen to me and then i probably would have taken either of montgomery or chris carson had they fallen to me at the 408 i'm pretty happy with terry now though to be honest with you the more i research on terry they have a phenomenal playoff schedule. It's like Philly, Dallas, Philly, Dallas for weeks 14 through 17. So that's beautifully teed up. Curtis Samuel still not back on the field. This is this is getting really, really concerning. So any of the concerns I had about Terry were only to do with, you know, bringing on Curtis Samuel, bringing in Deami Brown, just a little bit of more target competition. He's easily the best wide receiver there, but playoff schedule combined with Curtis Samuel being fucked up right now. Uh, liking Terry more and more and more and more. The decision was between Terry and Allen Robinson. And uh, for me, they're, I mean, they're in the same tier. They're right there at like that wide receiver 9, 10, 11 ranking range. 
But uh, I think Terry obviously provides more upside. It's hard to see Allen Robinson really hit any sort of upside with the situation, the quarterbacks that they have there in Chicago. So I took Terry over Robinson. If I had another draft, I might switch it up and take Robinson over Terry. But I'm glad I took Terry the more I do the research. So we had... uh, it, it was a relatively sharp draft. I think some some picks were like a little bit too sharp, you know, because we see guys like like Trey Sermon went at the, the, the team 10. I think Chris was a little faded. He had he had drank like four glasses of Hennessy by the time he started drafting. So he took Saquon at 10. Um, Taylor at the 203, I think, was fine. Justin Jefferson at the 310 was obviously fine. But Jacob Sermon back to back, I think, were probably a little early. You needed to push both of those running backs back at least one round there. Um, so Sermon went off the board at the 5'10". We had Damian Harris at the 5'3", Darrell Henderson at the 5'1". Um, so fifth round started getting a little bit spicy. We also had Trey Lance, as you guys could see, go up at the 402. Trey Lance all the way up at the 402. Now, here, here's the thing about Trey Lance. The way I look at a Trey Lance pick, uh, especially in super flex leagues, is at the end of the day, it almost doesn't fucking matter where you take him, right? At the end of the year, we're either going to look back and say, That was a great pick or that was a terrible pick. And it's going to have nothing to do with where you actually picked him in the draft. Obviously, it would have been nice to have gotten him in the fifth or sixth or seventh or eighth round. But regardless, he's either going to get on the field early and pop the fuck off or he's going to sit behind Jimmy G. Okay, and if he gets on the field early, there's probably no spot within the first you know, within the rounds four through seven where I would say it was a bad pick. So anyone sitting here saying that they could tell you whether or not it's a bad pick is a fucking moron, okay? So the Trey Lance pick, either going to look good, either going to look bad. I don't really think it matters where the fuck you took him, okay? You just, you're playing a risk game. You're you're gambling on high upside there, and I fucking respect it. And he stacked him with Brandon Ayuk after that, and I think it's that's kind of sexy, all right? So after Terry McLaurin as my wide receiver one I just secured my second quarterback and I said I am done with it because in that fifth round we have the 505 Tannehill was like my last QB in that tier that I really felt comfortable that I thought had a really good floor that I thought had a really good upside and uh I stacked him with Wilson um and also when you're drafting in a super flex league or one quarterback league just in general the targets for quarterbacks if you're playing in a four point per passing touchdown league, should always be these mobile guys. I would always take a Ryan Tannehill over uh, Kirk Cousins. I would take a Ryan Tannehill. I mean, the Tannehill to Stafford, I would take Tannehill over Stafford most likely. Um, anytime that you're playing in four point per passing touchdown league, I think you put a little bit of a premium on the guys that rush, okay? But I think, I mean, Tannehill and Russell Wilson also throw touchdowns. So I feel really good about my quarterback duo, I feel really good about my running back duo. Um, And then we hit the sixth round. And at this point, y'all know I have been uh, not necessarily a guy pinpointing Kyle Pitts whatsoever. But we're at the sixth and we are at the 608. And Pitts is a guy I've been fading in underdog drafts because he goes off the board at fucking 408, the 501, the 502, whatever. At the 608, this is the tight end premium league, guys. And the way you look at the way you approach tight end premium is tight end premium like doesn't make tight ends altogether like awesome plays, but it makes the guys who are going to get a lot of targets way more valuable, right? Because in a tight end premium league, when everyone else is getting half PPR, if Kyle Pitts goes five for 50 in a game, guess what? That's 10 points. A wide receiver would have to go, you know, six for six for 70 just to match those numbers. So uh, Kyle Pitts, I felt fine at 608 because. Hawkinson was off the board. Andrews was off the board. Pitts would be the next tight end up for me. Uh, Had Andrews fallen to me, I would have taken him over Pitts because there's too many injuries in Baltimore's offense right now not to uh, shoot Mark Andrews up the board. So I felt really good about Pitts there. I was debating between Pitts and Julio Jones, and I'm really glad I took Pitts because, you know, I was like, listen, like, why take Julio Jones when I could take the new Julio Jones? And then the seventh round came around and I said, why take Kyle Pitts when you could take Julio Jones? So I stacked up, I stacked up my old boo and my new boo. Julio Jones there at the seventh round. I'm going to be honest with you. That pick didn't feel good. That, that pick didn't feel good, but I got to stack him with Tannehill. He is my wide receiver too. I got him in the seventh round. It's one of those things where I tell y'all not to draft injuries and he's already kind of dealing with something lower body. And this feels like if, if there's going to be a pick in the draft that I look back and regret, it feels like it's going to be Julio because that is my fucking mantra. I'm like, don't draft injuries. What kind of breaking news? Wow. Holy shit. 
Is this real? The Patriots have released Cam Newton. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. Okay. Um, How do I feel? All right, we'll do some Cam Newton breaking news, I guess. So Cam Newton gets released. Mac Jones is the starting quarterback. Cam Newton will be picked up and or signed by someone else probably sooner rather than later. That is craziness. Okay, uh, so Mac Jones makes Jacoby Myers a lot sexier. Mac Jones makes Damian Harris a lot sexier. So shout out to my Damian Harris shares. Uh, Damian Harris should probably be borderline fifth round. So that yeah, that Damian Harris fifth round looks pretty good right now. Um, okay, so Mac Jones, I mean, I would say Mac Jones still – Kind of a boring play, boring upside. Going to be a very run-heavy offense. He doesn't bring anything rushing-wise. So even in super flex leagues, he's not a uh, he's not a sexy quarterback to play. He's still going to be in that like quarterback twenty-five ish range. Uh, but that is craziness. Obviously, it's a boost to Harris. I think I think it's a boost to Jacoby Myers as well. That's uh that's really 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 interesting. Okay, so Tanhill Pitts. Let me try to focus back up on this draft right now. Julio Jones. Uh, in the eighth round, y'all know I've been piping up for my guy. Antonio Brown is one of my guys this year. As you could see, we had, um, oh my God, my text messages are about to go fucking crazy. I got to put this shit on. Do not disturb. Sorry. Let me focus. Let me focus. Let me focus. Hang. Take a sip of coffee. Antonio Brown. So we look at the board and where did the other Tampa Bay receivers go off? Where's Mike Evans? Okay, Mike Evans and Chris Godwin went at the 6-1 and the 6-2. So I think that was pretty good value for them. But I'll still take Brown two rounds later. Two full rounds. More than two full rounds later. um, Two and a half rounds later. Again, in the games that they played together, Brown led them three in targets and receptions. And now that they have a full year together, the full offseason, he came in at week eight. I feel really good about Brown as like one of my flex plays uh, and then, you know, I just started stacking wide receivers because I have my running back squared away. And then by the, this time in the draft, um, I actually wanted Gus Edwards, but I kind of fucked up and like forgot. Look, I'm going to be honest with you. By this time in the draft, like I was we, we were starting to prepare for that party that night. And I was kind of in and out of the draft room. I forgot to print out a cheat sheet. So not making excuses. I'm just letting you know that that's a fucking valid excuse. All right. But we had Antonio Brown in the eighth round. Debo Samuel just took another wide receiver. Brandon Ayuk's got that little hammy thing going on. So it's possible that Debo gets a little bit of boost there if that lingers or he misses time or re-injures it or some shit like that. Again, we drafted before the preseason game, so I didn't know that beforehand. I just got a little bit lucky. Uh, Jared Goff, I secured my quarterback three. And uh, I kind of wish I went with Marquez Callaway over Debo Samuel, to be completely honest with you. He was another guy that I kind of forgot because all the cheat sheets that I was looking at from the people in the draft had him so far fucking down that, you know, everybody was marked up. We all forgot. Whatever. Fuck it. And uh, I took Jared Goff just to have a third quarterback because there was no one else I was comfortable grabbing as my third quarterback. Um, Mike uh, Mike Me Up was there, and he said I fucked up by taking Jared Goff over Michael Thomas. He thinks I should have taken Thomas in the 10th round just to have that just to have him for the playoff run we do have an IR spot so looking back on it maybe I should have taken Michael Thomas just to let sit on my roster but I think I feel all right with the with having a quarterback three I mean Jared Goff's probably going to put up like 13 points the one fucking week I play him but whatever 11th round I was like okay it's probably start time to start taking another running back um and it was most certain again like you look at my team and there are a lot of guys that I typically am telling y'all not to draft Kyle Pitts uh Raheem Oster, you'll see Dallas Goddard in the next pick. These are all guys that got an extreme value. So Julio Jones in the seventh round, Kyle Pitts in the sixth round, Raheem Oster in the 11th round. I've been telling you, don't draft him in the seventh, eighth round where he's gone. But Raheem Oster down in the 11th round, I'm okay with. And again, this was before the preseason game, so it felt like I got pretty fucking lucky there. Um, let me move this up a little bit. Y'all can take one more peek at the top right because I want you to see the rest of the board here. Raheem Oster. Down in the 11th round, happy to take him there uh, while Trey Sermon goes in the 5th round, right? There's prices for everybody that we can pay. And straight up, I'd take Sermon over Moser. But the 6th round discrepancy is a little bit crazy. You all have to understand, too, these are like my diehard subs right now. These are dudes who flew out to New York City to hang out with me for the weekend. So a lot of my analysis is pinned into their head, which can work for me or against me. Sometimes you see guys that I hate drop really far, which is why I get to take advantage of them. 
Uh, so Mostert in the 11th looked great in their preseason game. Uh, week three, again, I have no doubt that he's going to be in a committee with Trey Sermon for sure, but we've just seen him never hold up. Um, good chance that he gets hurt, misses time. Uh, Dallas Goddard in the 12th round of a tight end premium league, way more than happy because here's the thing too, like, again, you could flex tight ends here because they score more points. So they're scoring as many points as wide receivers on most weeks. So um, Goddard was, I mean, Evan Ingram went before Goddard. Goddard is a guy that I personally was not drafting. I told you all to fade him all summer. Um, so the people in this league are like, fuck Dallas Goddard. He falls to me all the way down in the 12th round, more than happy to take him next round. Tevin Coleman, um, here, I actually would have preferred Ty Johnson to him, but he got picked one spot before me. So I missed out on Ty Johnson, went with Tevin Coleman again, guys, don't be taking Michael Carter. Where did he go? Uh, five rounds earlier than the guys that are already playing above him. So Tevin Coleman, whatever. I, I actually think he's the starter in New York, not to say he's going to have the starting job for the whole year, not to say he's going to be good or not to say he's going to actually perform as well as a starter should perform, but he's going to get volume. This is going to be a committee there. And then round 14, 15, I literally actually wasn't even there for the pick. Um, I was downstairs doing some, I think I might've been showering to be honest with you. I started dipping into the tequila and, uh, then I let Mike make the next couple picks for me, but I'm actually happy with it because MVS, I feel like, is really the, the wide receiver two in Green Bay. And Sterling Shepard is a guy that I think is a uh, great value there. Great value in the 15th. Uh, Kenny Galladay, like, still hurt. I think uh, someone else got it. Didn't Darius Slayton get hurt? I don't know. I might be making that shit up, but I like Sh I like Shepard. He can be like a shitty flex play on, on bye weeks or whatever. So I'm happy with the way my team turned out. Obviously, I wish I had grabbed an RB3. I, you know, this was one of those drafts where I was like, I, I was kind of pinned in on getting either Damien Harris or Trey Sermon in the seventh round. It just didn't work out because both those guys went in the fifth round. Uh, so I, didn't, I just didn't get to capitalize on, uh, on that. So... I don't know. That's the way my draft turned out. I think we have really strong starting running backs, really strong starting quarterbacks. Um, you know, I'm not super high on Pitts, but that's a guy I could absolutely be wrong on, and uh, and he could blow the fuck up. And then I have a lot of depth at wide receiver. So between Terry, Julio, Antonio Brown, Debo, uh, I feel like we'll be able to get two two solid starting wide receivers and and a flex player too. So I'm feeling really good about the team altogether. Uh, let me know what y'all think. Let me know what teams you guys like the best. Whose team do you think is the worst? Chris, Team 10. <clears throat> uh, that's it. So thank you all for joining me today. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. We will be doing videos every single day this week to help you prep for your drafts. We're also doing live streams every single night this week, doing mock drafts, 7 p.m. Eastern time. Make sure you subscribe. Hit the notification bell so it lets you know when we go live. When we go live. All right, I'll see y'all tonight, 7 p.m., then I'll see y'all tomorrow morning again at 5 a.m. Eastern Time every single day. I love y'all. I'm out.